folks, Ariel over here at Finest. Today I am doing something I should have done many months ago, <laughs> and that is being sure that I have all of the garden seeds that we need for this next year. Normally I try to get this done back in, say, December. That's about when most seeds that I'd need to order have uh, like their new crops of seeds in for the year and uh, this year I didn't get to it I was just too busy and I wasn't too worried because I was pretty sure that I had enough of just about everything but I'm still gonna go over this and check anyway if you're new welcome uh, I live a little over 6,000 feet above sea level up in the high mountain valley in the Wyoming mountains it's winter here about eight months a year including this month the wind is howling outside right now we haven't had much wind this winter but today we've got some and snowing sideways and I can barely see our own fence line and the snow is this deep on the ground and I will not be planting anything for many months yet but some of you probably already are or soon will be so I wanted to talk a little bit about what we always plant I've done videos on this in the past and um, you can look those up it hasn't changed for the most part and what we grow are the things that I have learned over time will reliably grow in our climate and that produce food that we like to eat. Uh, our climate here is fairly harsh and cold. We get, you know, temps to minus 30 in the winter and we can get freezes and frosts and even snow flurries all summer long. So what we grow here in the summer is what a lot of people would consider a winter garden. So the things you don't see me discussing growing are things that just won't grow here. Anyway, um, go check out the whole gardening playlist if you want to see more videos of the garden. But this little thing is my little handy map that is just approximately drawn, not to scale or anything, of where the garden beds are. This is, I've got many years in here, um, this was the garden 2022, so this was last year. And I try to write down what varieties I plant where. This gives me a record of what's in each bed, if I want to rotate things, or if I want to look back and be like, hey, you know, the peas on this end of the bed just really did a lot better than the peas on that end. We want to plant more of the one and less of the other. I can, I have learned over time, I think I will remember what I put where, and I will not. By <laughs> months later, and many things in between, I simply will not. So, on my garden map from last year, uh, I noted which kind of potatoes I put in each of our potato beds. We had an excellent potato harvest. We got over 240 pounds of potatoes, um, so on. So looking at that, I have a good idea of what I want to plant this year. Potatoes uh, come from, you know, seed potatoes. They're just potatoes with eyes on them that aren't treated with some kind of growth retardant or whatever, like a lot of ones in the grocery store are to keep them from sprouting so quick. Those are not stored in my dry seed storage. If you're wondering about this handy little seed suitcase, this is designed for um, storing photos. Uh, I think you can get them at craft stores. This idea is not original to me. I saw somebody else doing it and thought that is a brilliant way to organize a whole bunch of little seed packets. It was way better than my rubber bands in a cardboard box that I had before. So I have them all labeled in alphabetical order, beans, beets, cabbage, chard, carrots, cucumbers, etc. of the things we can grow. And then say the beans packet has my different varieties of beans. And so I'm just double checking that I have everything I want to plant this year. And if I don't, I should probably get myself a scrap of paper here to make notes on of anything I do need to get ordered. Um, green beans or other colors of beans, I like to grow many, many colors of most things just because it's fun and it's pretty and they all have slightly different micronutrients and so on, uh, are not something that grows reliably for us. Often we're too cold in the summer, but if we have a warm summer with less freezes or less hard freezes, they, we do grow some and we like them. So I've got... Oh, and if you're wondering about seed companies to order from, I do try to order, uh, don't just try, I plant stuff that's all heirloom and open pollinated. This would technically allow you to save all your own seeds, though here a lot of things freeze to death before they can produce a mature seed. But you can also go to the channel homepage on Odyssey or YouTube or wherever you watch this and search for seed saving videos and you will see various videos of saving seeds of things that do grow quick enough for us to uh, mature you know, get a mature seed and save our own. But I will uh, link down below to a whole list of seed companies. I don't have any affiliation with any of them. These are all ones I've found that uh, sell heirloom seeds, good quality seeds. I've ordered from most of them at some point or another. Uh, some of them are, you know, geared toward our colder climate because that's what I try to find. So if you're a deep south gardener, you may want to look at some other companies and some sell a wide variety of seeds. 
The majority of my seeds for many, many years I have ordered from Baker Creek Seeds or uh, their website is rareseeds.com, though I've ordered other things from other seed companies and I've always had excellent germination rates. Uh, I do a whole video talking about how to store seeds so that they're good year after year and you can keep using them. That's what I've been doing for years. Go check that out if you're interested. Anyway, so going through just our garden plants, this does not mean this is what you should plant. There's no use in planting food that you don't want to eat. <laughs> so unless you're determined to make yourself learn to like it or something, if you hate green beans, don't plant green beans. We like them. So I'm going to plant some uh, yellow ones. Golden butter wax is a variety that's done well for us over the years. Red swan bush um, is pretty nice. Uh, kind of purpley red beans. They turn green when they're cooked, but they're very pretty and easier to find on the bush because they're not green like all the leaves and stems. Uh, they seem to do well. And uh, there's a this is Landris stringless. This is a, a green bean actually that is green. Um, last year I put in, let's see here, Contender. That's the one. And Kentucky Wonder. I am out of those two. That's two more kinds of... Um, can't write and talk at the same time. Uh, the green beans that we do like and tend to do well for us. So I do want some more of those seeds. Then also in the bean one here, um, I've got some of these runner beans. I want to plant them. I never ended up with a spot in the last year that was good for planting them. And I wanted to try planting some lima beans, though I don't think they are likely to survive our summer. I do like fresh baby lima beans. So if I have space, I may plant some of those. So I need a few more of some green, um, green beans. Beets. We love beets. I actually have two containers full of beet seeds here. Beets tend to do well. We like them fresh, pickled, all kinds of things. One of the prettiest and most fun are these candy stripe beets. They're called choiga, or I'm not sure how that's pronounced, but they're beautiful like pink and white striped, and we love those. I have plenty of those seeds. Early Wonder is a good red one. Uh, Crosby Egyptian, that's a good red one. So I have plenty. I've tried different red ones over the years, and I can't say I've come up with one that's like my far and away favorite above all the rest. I like all of them. So um, and this is why these little boxes are nice, because I see my golden beet packet decided to distill seeds into my little container and I can retrieve them. Golden beets are probably my favorite of all the beets. I really like all of them, but these golden ones just have a really rich kind of sweet, earthy, mild flavor, and they don't stain everything red when you touch them. And <laughs> that can definitely be handy, though I like red beets as well. Um, I've got some of these red uh, mango beets. They're more grown as a livestock feed. You can eat them, but they tend to be grown as a livestock feed. Didn't have space in the garden to get any planted last year, but one of these years I hope to get some of those growing mostly to feed to chickens and stuff through the winter. I've also got Bull's Blood Beets, Detroit Dark Red, and Lutz Winter Keeper. Um, these are all other red beets that I have had success with in the past, and so I will just pick probably a couple of them to plant this year. So I am good on beets. I do not need any more beet seeds. I have, like I said, go check out if you're curious my video on storing seeds in such a way that they germinate well after year, year after year, but I generally get 99 to 100% germination rate for at least five or six years on um, most of my seeds. And by then I've usually used a seed packet. Up. I rarely plant a whole packet of most things in a single year because I like planting such a variety and we only have so much space. So a packet will last me for a few years. Um, this is my cabbages and such. Some of these I'm not going to be planting probably yet this year. These are bought hoping that we'd have our little greenhouse done and we don't yet because it's reliant on being on the side of our house and so on so i will probably be getting my cabbage plants already started from a local greenhouse again but i have some seeds for doing them when uh when we do have a place inside to to start them there's just not enough windowsill space or lights you know light in here in the tiny house to be able to start our own plants but mixed in with you know some cabbages and broccolis and cauliflowers and brussels sprouts um, I put in here a few of these Chinese cabbage is, um, I think our favorite were these two, uh, Chinese cabbage Hilton and Yellow Heart Winter. These are kind of a loose leaf cabbage, 
little bit like a lettuce head, but anyway, we, we did really enjoy them and they seem to do well in our climate. So, and they grow just fine putting the seeds direct sun into the garden. So I'll plant some of those so I don't need any cabbage seeds. Uh, chards and kohlrabis, those are kind of related plants. Chards grow very well here. We like some, the chickens love them. I've loved for many years this five color. Um, chard, of course, is the same plant basically as a beet. It's just one that's been selected for its leaves versus its roots. So they grow well here as too. So this five color is really a pretty combo. Um, I've got an Oreo colored one that I haven't tried planting yet. It looks like it'd be pretty. Um, I've tried planting some kohlrabis. They do okay. I've never been super impressed with my harvest of them. I don't know if I might space in the garden for them this year. Uh, Vulcan Swiss chard. I kind of got that uh, partially. It's a real pretty deep red and it is beautiful and all, but I also just like the name because Clay's been a fan of the series that that name would have come from for many years. I've got, I've got several packs of the five color, so I don't need any um, chard seed. A lot of those have, you know, thousands of seeds in a packet and I don't plant because I don't have space and we can't eat. We get so many leafy green things that grow well here in the summer. Can't eat them all. Um, but I may try drying some chard leaves to feed to the chickens through the, the winter. Carrots. We plant a lot of carrots. We had probably 120 pounds of carrots out of one little uh, pair of rows down a single garden bed this year. What stuff is making it hot in here even with the fact that we've got howling wind outside? Uzbek Goldens are probably my absolute favorite. This packet is actually empty, so I definitely need more of them. They do, we don't tend to plant any of the ones that get a super deep root because of our rocky soil under the beds. Um, the, they're just not a good fit. So the shorter, fatter ones are better, you know, things that stay about eight inches long or less are a good one for us. Like I said, we got many, many pounds of carrots this year. Uzbekistan is obviously another mountainy, cold-ish climate. Those do well here. Um, We've got these Kodora Long 8. They were really good, really sweet. I don't know if it was just a coincidence last year. We didn't have great germination on them last year. I still have some of the seeds, so I won't be ordering any more for now, and I will probably plant some more. I thought they have done better other years, but last year they didn't particularly do great. Um, I still have some of this yellow one. I can't pronounce these names. Wana Obtuse Boys or something like that. They're an okay yellow, but we did not like them quite as much as we liked. Um, they're a little deeper orangey yellow, and they grew well, but I like the really meaty Uzbek ones better for a yellow one. Danvers Half Long, these are a shorter one of a very famous, you know, uh, 19th century heirloom variety. Um, they've done very, very well for us. We got gobs and gobs of them last year. One of my favorites is Cosmic Purple. They're orange on the outside, or sorry, purple on the outside and orange on the inside. We always plant tons of them. There are so many seeds in there, I know I don't need any more of them right now. Um, coral, that's another one that's done really well for us over the years. I just, again, like all the pretty colors. Um, and I have a few others in here that parsnips have not done too well for us. Um, St. Valerie and Nantes Scarlet are another two good orange ones that have done well. This Pulsa Aceta Black, they're like a black purple one. Um, they almost have like an apple carrot flavor. It's a really interesting flavor. We liked the flavor. Um, they tend to have a lot of fine hairy roots on the side that I didn't like quite as much just for cleaning up. Um, so uh, we don't grow as much. As, oh, and the other thing is they will stain everything they touch more even than a red beet. Just beware of that. But they're very high in anthocyanins and little, you know, micronutrients like that. Purple Dragons is another purplish um, on the outside, uh, orange on the inside. They didn't just, just didn't grow quite as well for us as the Cosmic Purple. So I've got plenty of all the carrots I want to plant, and I will be sticking with my favorites and pl probably plant a few of the others to get the seeds up. Cucumbers, these are in the same category as uh, green beans for us. Some years, if it's warm, we get some, some we don't. And I put all of my uh, zucchinis in my cucumber pack as well. Um, Ford hook, straight neck, those are zucchinis. I've grown, um, got here miniature white, straight eight, market more. Monica, these are all cucumbers. I can't say I have a whole 
a lot of feedback on which is best there because ours pretty much either grow if it stays warmish and we don't get too many hard freezes or they don't and that's not the fault of the seed if it's just too cold. So I don't need any more of those because we only plant a handful every year. That packet is all flowers and herbs. Um, they don't actually go in the well, flowers and herbs, they don't go in the veggie garden. Some of those do go around the house and such, and you can look up videos of what we plant in the herb and flower planters around there. And if we're going to ever get the uh, quack grass to die back in more places, we'll have a lot more of them planted around a lot of other places in the property. And I've got another leaky seed pack that I obviously should have taped shut for blue curled scotch kale. Um, kale is another one that grows super well here. It, uh, is another one that, like I said, we can grow so many leafy greens well here in the summer that uh, there's only so much of each one we can eat, but chickens like kale as well. And that's another one I think I'd like to go, grow an, a purposely in excess of and hang some up in the attic of the shop to dehydrate, to see um, how they enjoy having some of the dried greens through the winter. Let's see if I got some tape handy here to fix that so that doesn't happen again. But blue curled scotch kale is a really crinkly one. We really like that. Nero di Toscana is more of a flat leaf one. I haven't been such a fan of the way that one grows, though the interesting leaf textures are different. And again, whatever I'm saying grows well in our climate, if you have a very different climate, may mean our favorites are ones that won't do well at all for you. Uh, Scarlet Kale, it's really pretty. You have the dark purple mix. I've grown Dwarf Siberian. It looks a lot like the other one, except it's, uh, you know, smaller. I've got Dwarf Blue Curled Scotch. It kind of makes a lower growing one. And then this Red Ursa. It's like pinky purple in the middle and um, green on the outside. This is so gorgeous. Um, I often stick some in the flower beds just around the house because it's so beautiful, as well as tasting good. So I have plenty of kale seeds. There's hundreds of seeds in each packet and each plant we can cut and come again for all summer long, so I don't need that many lettuces. I am a sucker for all the pretty, pretty uh, colors and leaf shapes of lettuces, so we have tons of them. And once again, I know for sure I'm not going to need to plant more. There's some strawberry spinach seeds we did save ourselves. I've kind of got them naturalized around a lot of the property as well. Um, because they receive themselves prolifically, which is great. They're a, you know, become a plant. I like having come up everywhere. Um, I've got tons of kinds of leafy lettuces here. Things that are some of my favorites are this okra red. That's really pretty to have a little bit of to put in a mix of greens. I don't really like the taste of it all by itself. Same for this endive or mizuna. I've got lime streaks and the pink one. Um, they're all nice mixed in with the other things. I don't like any of those just by themselves, but we usually do a mix, so that's great. Spinach doesn't seem to do well for us. Uh, I don't know what the difference is because generally it does good in a cold climate, but ours seems to like grow a little bit and then just bolt. Um, lettuces do better. Uh, some of our favorites have been tennis ball. This is a butter crunch kind of lettuce. I really like that one. I really like See, is this one I planted last year? No, it's not. I should this year because that one does well. The Linux, Linux, the deep um, reddish lettuce. That's, again, very pretty to mix in. Garnet Rose, um, I like it. It's pretty. It doesn't tend to germinate as well for me. Then, of course, I've got a Rocky Top lettuce mix, which is a whole bunch of them. Um, and that hardly makes sense almost to plant because I have so many others. Um, Lola Rosa, I did have that one in here last year, yes. Um, that one's another just pretty crinkly red leaf. Bronze Beauty, I really, really like that one. I plant some of that every year. It's kind of green in the center and bronze on the edges. Merlot, I don't, I don't know if it's the deep red colors that have a harder time germinating because um, this is another one that it's really pretty, but they don't all germinate as well um, as a lot of other things. Reville Des Quattro Sassons, it's another crispy, butter crunchy, um, you know, kind of red blush leaves. I like that one. Little Gem probably wasn't our favorite. None of these are bad. May Queen is another really crispy, crunchy, sweet butterhead type uh, that we like. And that's probably our favorite. So I definitely do not need any lettuce seeds because that's probably enough for many more years of 
growing lettuce. Onions. This is another one that I don't need this year because onions are definitely grow best from seed. Look at the, you know, two pound plus onions we produced this year, but they do need started well ahead of when I can plant them in the ground. So again, I buy my starts from a local greenhouse until we got a place where we can actually start our own. So I've got some here in preparation for that that I want to play around with, but um, I can't really give you a whole lot of feedback on what does best for us because I'm kind of stuck with what the greenhouse starts for now. Hopefully soon we'll be doing our own. Peas, uh, peas do pretty well here. They're a, a cold hardy uh, variety. Last year I did Langston's Progress Number 9 and Alaska. Those both consistently do really well here. I've got some Alaskas left. Um, these little Tom Thumb ones, they do great, but they're not as prolific. They're a mini one. If you have like a, a patio or something, you might want to try these. We have space where we could get taller, so I prefer planting taller ones. These purple ones are really pretty. They grow very ornamentally lovely. Um, Desiree Dwarf Lost Talkers or something. I'm sure I butchered that. We didn't like the flavor. Um, they were just a little bit mealy. But if you want to just put something in your flower bed to look really pretty, they have a lovely flower and pea shape. Um, we've got some early frosties here from Amica Seeds, uh, their seed company down in Colorado. Those I don't have as much experience with yet. And then sometimes peas are in too big of a bag to actually fit handily in my little container here because they're a bulky one. This is a this was a pound of Langston's Progress that came from High Mowing Organic. Um, I planted a bunch of them last year. I'll be planting more this year. So I have the peas I need, except for the fact that the other one I really like is Tall Telephone. And I don't... If you're going to plant those, make sure you do have a space for them to grow tall. Because I had trellises up to like here and they went up to like here and then they flopped over and they were still growing they could easily take something like six feet tall but they were prolific and so I do want some more of those so I almost have all the peas I want oh hang on I forgot I have two pea containers I might have some in here so because that's another thing we like them fresh we like them frozen what did I have left here oh these were sugar snap peas sugar and that is our favorite sugar snap pea that's where you eat the whole shell and peas inside so i have plenty of them so i do still need some tall telephones and the peas radishes and turnips turnips grow i don't really like them that's <laughs> i've tried cooking them different ways they're edible they're fine we don't love them so i don't plant many of them radishes i don't actually like fresh radishes very much either just for their flavor but they um they cook well, they lose some of that spicy heat if you roast them in with other root crops. So I like that. And theoretically, I really like some of the um, like long, skinny, uh, what are those called, daikon radish varieties because I've had them and they're delicious. And every time I've ever planted them, they bolt right away and do not make a root. I don't know why in my climate. But if they do bolt right away, you can eat their seed pods. A lot of people don't know this. Or you can get something like this rat's tail radish, which is grown specifically for the seed pods and not its roots. They make these really cool like bean pod looking things when they bolt. They make first a beautiful little purple or pink flower that the pollinators love, and then they make these like seed pod looking things. If you pick them while they're young, before they get older and stringy, they taste a little bit like a slightly spicy green bean, and they're delicious. So when ours bolt and we don't get a uh, root, we just eat their seed pods and that's tasty but I have plenty and plenty of radishes for the amount that we eat and then squashes this is just a hopeful for the future someday when we have a greenhouse things like some of the fastest growing watermelons supposedly and so on that I wanted to try and we don't yet have a place where they have any chance of surviving so I have enough of them so I've only got about four things I need to order um, on my garden bed here that will let me plant everything I need. The strawberry bed is already completely full. Um, the, like I said, the onion and cabbage starts will come from a local greenhouse. I've got all the other seeds I need and then the, the rest is potatoes and the garlic is already planted since last fall and the, like I said the strawberry plants are already in there because they're a perennial. So 
that is going through all my garden seeds. Um, once again, I will try to remember to link down below to a whole list of seed companies I've ordered from. There's many, many good seed sellers out there. I read something the other day about there still being seed shortages. Um, I'm not sure where that is. Maybe it's some of the bigger companies. I haven't seen that in yet in the um, folks I'm ordering from. I'll try to remember to link to maybe my video about this seed suitcase and storing seeds so that they germinate well year after year. And... Uh, so that's my garden seed planning. Got just a couple packs of seeds I want to order that I don't have right now. And then I will just have to forget all about seeds for many, many months because the snow probably isn't going to melt here till at least April. Um, and then we'll be planting sometime after that. So hopefully maybe some of that info is helpful if you're either also in a really cold climate and can benefit from some of our experience of what actually grows well here, or if you... I uh, just wonder, in general, how I plan our garden stuff for the year. Have a great day, guys. Enjoy spring or winter or whatever you're having at your place. Oh, and of course, if you do live somewhere way warmer, you may consider this list of stuff as things you can grow in the middle of winter. We hope you enjoyed it. Come back next time for more adventures. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.